Hi, my name is Caroline Hershey of Hershey Fiber Arts. Welcome to my demo video on how to spin with a French pillar style spindle. This is the new style of spindle that I am offering in my Etsy shop. It is an interpretation of an antique spindle which features a flicking top and butted end, in between which is a thinner section for storing your spun yarn. The top, as you can see, tapers to a thin tip and is grooved with a spiral notch to catch the yarn while spinning. The spiral notch is usually carved for clockwise spinning for right-handed people. However, I also offer counterclockwise spindles for the lefties out there like myself. The counterclockwise can also be useful when plying for right-handed people or if you have a project that might call for a yarn spinning uh, twisted in the opposite direction perhaps to create an interesting visual or textural effect during weaving or knitting. To spin with a French pillar spindle, one will need to keep one hand dedicated to flicking and catching the spindle, while the other is dedicated to holding and drafting your fiber. Because of this, I recommend either the use of a distaff or spinning from the fold. To start your yarn, first you need to draw out some fiber from the fold, as so, and then pierce it with the tip of the spindle. Wrap the fiber a few times about the tip, make sure it's snug, and then wrap it up so that the fiber fibers fall into the spiral notch. Give it a quick flick while holding it between the middle and the ring finger. Draft a little bit, make sure not to go too far past your staple fiber length. Draft a little bit more, give it a flick, and just slowly build your yarn until you have a few inches. Okay, maybe a couple of feet. Pretty much enough so that you can start wrapping it around the middle of your spindle. Some people might like to start wrapping the top at the base. Some might like to start wrapping it high. I prefer in the middle. It's really up to you. You may have noticed that I'm spinning left-handed with a counterclockwise spindle. This is because the action of the flick in this way directly mirrors the action on a right-handed person. In order to spin clockwise for a lefty, the basic process is still the same. However, with one very important difference. While you would still draw out the fiber and pierce, You'll notice that the spiral is going in the opposite direction. And you'll notice that instead of the spindle resting between the two middle fingers, instead I'm cupping it in my hand like this. Give it a flick, draft a bit, flick again, draft a bit flick again, draft a bit. This would probably be the action taken by a right-handed person to ply with the counterclockwise spindle. And once you have enough fiber spun up, start building your top and just bring it up and eventually you'll get used to the angle that the yarn that the fiber has to be kept at at the spindle and as you get used to that angle that needs to be kept you'll start um, noticing that 
the yarn just falls into the groove and you'll stop thinking about making it actually consciously falling into the groove. It'll just do it automatically. When spinning with the distaff, the handle of the distaff rests on the palm, like so, and is most comfortably held with the small and ring fingers. You most likely want to hold it with the bottom three. That's all right to begin with. But you'll notice once you try to grab your fiber that you're going to be using your middle finger as well. So you just pull out a bit of fiber. This, this staff has been dressed for worsted spinning with the fibers all parallel. Pierce. Wrap it around. Wrap it so that it falls into the groove. You'll get used to that. You have the fibers pinched between the thumb and the first two fingers. You give it a flick and it's, it's one action. You flick and catch. Flick and catch. You draft a bit. Flick and catch. I didn't catch the wall that time. No, neither that time. Well, at this point, you really do have enough to wind it on. Wind it that way. Wind it that way. Try not to get yourself in the face. And it's okay just to do short bursts like this when you're first getting used to it. It is important to note that the yarn is going to keep the spindle up against the thumb when you have a good angle. If you don't, then the angle might not be so great. You might want to try different angles to get used to, to, to get um, an idea of what feels good. Also keep in mind that when winding on your top, if you're going up and down the spindle as you wind on, it winds on a lot faster. I just wanted to show you what it looks like to use the opposite direction using the distaff. Make the pierce, wrap it around, wrap it up the spiral. Same action. It's just a difference in where the spindle rests. When using a cage distaff with your wool, you have the advantage of using your whole hand for drafting while the other hand remains dedicated to spinning with the spindle. Using this distaff allows the spinning of woolen or woolen yarns or worsted or semi-worsted depending on how you dress, dress the distaff with your fiber. This distaff can be used the same way for either right or left-handed people while standing, sitting, or even walking. In the sitting position, there's a couple different ways that you can um, hold your distaff. Um, the first way would be tucking the end into the cushions and letting the distaff rest on your arm while you draft with the hand. Another way is to put the distaff resting on the knee while being held down at the bottom on the floor with your foot and that way you could draft the same way and you don't have to be holding your distaff, you don't have that weight. If you're worried about fatigue that might be the way to do it. So I'd like to conclude by thanking you for joining me here today. I hope you've learned something or found something that you can take away that's useful in your spinning. Also, if you happen to have any comments or questions, maybe if you found something that I can improve upon, uh, please feel free to drop me a line. I always like uh, finding ways to do things better in my business and what I offer. 
uh, you can comment here and I'll get it. Or you can reach me through Etsy. My business is Hershey Fiber Arts. I also have a business email, hfa underscore proprietor at yahoo.com for those who don't do Etsy. I'm also on Ravelry and I show a lot of my work on there. Um, so please feel free to reach out and thank you for joining me here today.